welcome to my next YouTube video. In this video I will set out some of my reasons why we should not believe the global warming alarmists. First, in an earlier video I set down some of the predictions that have not come true. This is over a 40 year period of predicting and none of which have actually come true. Here are some more that have failed to materialize. By the year 2000 the ice caps will have melted. This has not happened. The Himalayan glaciers will be gone. This has not happened. The Netherlands will be uninhabitable. Rising sea levels will overrun the dikes that have protected the Netherlands till now. This has also failed to materialize. Much to the relief of the Dutch. So why should we believe these prophecies now? Or is it just because a 16 year old school ghoul tells us we must? The next reason not to believe is that no questions are allowed. As these may detract from the mantra that man and his burning of fossil fuels are responsible for all or at least most of the global warming. That is in fact not actually happening. Skeptics are put down and attempts are made to destroy them. Recently two Irish scholars have been deplatformed. This in an attempt to discredit their scientific findings. These that show that CO2 has only a minor role in warming the planet, and more particularly so, man's minuscule contribution to that total of CO2. What should have happened is that the two should be challenged to explain their views and subject them to examination by other scientists in an attempt to get to the truth. Are we really just seeing a policy of not wanting to examine these views because the alarmists may be forced to actually face the truth. Now who do the global warming alarmists hide behind? 16 year old schoolgirls of course. No one can criticize school children without looking mean and dominating. Therefore kids are put in the front of their campaigns. Remember these children are mostly told what to say. I watched a panel discussion that included the current hero of the alarmists, Greta Thunberg, only to watch her avoiding most of the questions that were put to her. She had no idea what to say, so passed on the questions, as in this format of a panel discussion, she could not be pre-prepared, and so just fumbled along. The next question is who is making the money from this global warming scam? Well, one of the profiteers is Al Gore. Between 2008 and 2011, he had large investments in companies that were involved in carbon trading. These companies made an estimated US $218 million in profit from an idea that was promoted by his film, An Inconvenient Truth. Also, he has a record of investing in companies that have subsequently benefited from government grants. These companies were established to help alleviate global warming, none of which have achieved anything in real reductions of greenhouse gases that are supposed to be the real culprits. The next question, is it only governments that can provide the answers? I would ask you to name one problem that only government can fix unless it is the government that has in fact created the problem in the first place. The markets and individuals are more efficient in solving problems and doing so at a much cheaper rate than governments. In the 1800s horses were the principal method of transport but the number of horses needed by the ever increasing population were creating their own problems. For one, how do we clean up the streets after the horses have been there? Pollution in the streets was becoming a real problem. How was it solved? The government did not have the answer, the markets did. The invention of the internal combustion engine was not a government invention, it was an individual's. Carl Benz invented the car. It was the internal combustion engine that got horses in vast numbers off the streets. It is the internal combustion engine in cars, trucks and planes that is responsible to a large degree
for the lifestyle that we now enjoy. The promoters of the theory that only government can fix this non-problem have a greater aim, that is world government, and this world government be based on the theories of Karl Marx or socialism. Here is a quote made by Dr. Endenhofer in 2010. He was at the time a co-chair of working group number three of the IPCC. Quote, we, the UN's IPCC, redistribute de facto the world's wealth by climate policy. One has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. This has nothing to do with environmental policy anymore. End quote. Need I say more? Global warming is a political campaign to establish global government on socialist lines. Remember the elites know best how you should live your life. Well, that is the end of this video. If you would like to comment, both positive and negative, feel free, as it is good to have a two-way conversation. Also, this will give me ideas for future commentary. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. And if you wish, subscribe to find out when I will be uploading new videos. Just use the appropriate buttons. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.